Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 38. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to add a new spell to our game. Uh, so let's dive in. Okay, so first of all just want to apologize for the um, couple of weeks delay on episodes. Uh, basically I've been focusing on other things um, work, life, etc, etc. But I'm back with another episode, so let's get started. Right, so on to spells. So the first thing I'll do is make a new folder in our source code directory, um, and let's just call that spells. Nice and simple. Or it would be nice and simple. Ah, sp so excellent. Spells half already existed because I was uh, testing out some code before this episode. There we go. Just had to get rid of the reference to the directory which no longer existed and then we can make a new one. So we have a directory called spells and now we're going to add a new file and let's call it storm.lua for the storm spell we are going to create. And we'll start out in the uh, usual style by boilerplating up some um, code so our Lua object acts like a uh, object-oriented class. So where are we? Storm equals empty object storm.create is a function and we want to return the whole storm table at the end here and our create function will need an instance and it will need to return that instance. Very good. So let's think a little bit about what we want our spell to do. So this spell will loop through all of the enemies on the screen and it will deal a certain amount of damage to them, which we'll uh, figure out eventually. So let's uh, say spell damage and let's just set it to um, we'll start off by setting it to 10 and we'll fine-tune it as we go so 10 should kill pretty much everything on the screen uh, but at least that's a good way of knowing if it's working or not and we've got some spell damage what else does our spell need we need the ability to cast our spell so let's just say cast is a function it will take a reference to our game state and of course a reference to self. Um, and we will need a few things out of our game state. So we'll need to know the current server so room contains all of the entities in our game or at least all of the enemies in our game. And so if we grab the room from game.map get and let's just check. I think it's get current room or current room. There we go. So current room. Then we can start off by looping through all of those enemies. If we say for underscore uh, mob in room get entities get entities do end and we want to do something to every entity in our room to start with so we'll say mob take damage oops damage self dot spell damage okay so we've got a very basic outline of a spell let's actually use that somewhere so if we look at our game state and we go down to the key pressed function which uh, sort of controls at least some of the keys in our game we can see that if we press X at the moment we trigger the action 2 method on player so let's actually change action 2 because at the moment we were just using action 2 to test our sword I believe yep so let's um, replace this with some code to cast our storm spell. 
So we'll just require our storm spell by going storm equals require source logic, uh, sorry, source spells storm. And to start with, we only need one instance of our storm spell. So we'll just say storm.create as a local variable. Doesn't take any arguments at the moment. And then down here, we can say storm spell.cast and pass in our game. Now, I'll run the code just to check everything's wired up correctly. And I'm expecting it to crash because um two reasons so let's fix the one reason um inst.cast equals cast so we just need to make the cast function available on the instance of our storm object which i've just done and now i'm expecting um things to crash because room get entities doesn't currently exist uh, but if it does crash in this way we can go in and fix it so let's give it a go Oops, attempt to index local game, a nil value on storm line 4. So something is going wrong inside of our player function. There we go. And there we go, perfect. Attempt to call method get entities a nil value. So what was going wrong there is I was using a dot instead of a colon to invoke the cast method. And because this is Lua and because it's an instance method, we need to use a colon so that self gets passed in as the first argument. So now let's go into room and actually add in that get entities method. So if we look at our room object, we can see we just have a table that contains all of the entities inside of a room. So it should be as easy as creating a method called get entities. Giving it a reference to self and then returning self.entities. And then just making that method available. There we go, let's uh, try it again. Attempt to call a nil value storm.lua line 6. So on line 6, we call room get entities. So let's take a closer look. Get entities is function, it takes self. It returns self dot entities. There we go. Attempt to call a table value. So that looks okay, that looks okay. Then mob take damage hmm let's take a look so we should be able to get all of the entities in the room like so and then oh of course this is because get rid of this line here. This is because I forgot to wrap this in an iterator. So the ipairs function will turn a table into something we can loop over. So that's what we need to do there. And now you can see that our spell will remove absolutely everything in the room, including items, because our items can take damage as well. So let's uh, fix that problem next. So at the moment we only have one type of enemies and those are our slimes. We've had them for uh, pretty much the entire series. And what we're going to do is whenever we create an enemy, 
we will just tag that as being an enemy. So down here we'll say local slime equals entity create etc etc etc. Actually while we're here let's tidy this up a bit. There we go. And we'll also say slime dot is equal to enemy. And then of course we'll return our slime. Then inside our storm function, we can say if mob dot is oops if mob is an enemy, then we'll deal spell damage to them. Otherwise, we won't do anything. So let's uh, give this a try. Great, so now we only deal damage to the enemies. So let's make it a bit more interesting, um, because at the moment being able to kill everything with one spell is a bit boring. So one thing we can do to make things more interesting is um, make our spell do less damage. So we'll just change spell damage to 3. Another thing we can do is actually play some sounds. So I've got a couple of sounds we can um, load in. So love.audio.load is it load or new? New source. There we go. So before this episode I just made um, using FXer I made a couple of sounds. Um, one storm.wave assets sounds storm.wave so we'll start off with that one and we can just load it in as a static sound and now whenever we do damage to an enemy we will actually um, get the storm sound to play and let's just change this to be camel cased because everything else is camel cased and we want to be consistent there we go great so now we play a storm sound um, and the next thing to do is to stop being able to spam our spell. And the other thing, well, quickly, let's uh, move this. Let's move the sound up above the for loop so we don't try and play the sound um, for every enemy on the screen. We can get away with just playing it once. And now let's stop our player from being able to spam um, the spell by actually requiring the player to have a certain amount of potions in their inventory. So we can close these now. And let's take a look at our inventory class. So we have an add potion method, but we don't have anything to change the number of potions or get the number of potions. So let's go ahead and create a get potions function. And this just needs to return self dot potion oops, potion count. And let's also have a set potions function. Can't spell potions function. And this just needs to take a number and set um, self dot potion count to that number. Let's make these methods available instance get potions equals get potions and instance set potions equals set potions okay and now if we jump into our cast method we can grab the inventory by saying game get inventory there we go and now we can just do a test we can say if inventory get potions is greater than and we'll say self dot uh, spell cost so let's add a spell cost down here spell cost and we'll say three
then we want to go ahead and do all of this else for now we will oops, do nothing let's give it a try so I can't do anything if I grab free potions I still can't do anything so there's uh, something we need to ah there we go something we need to work on down here so greater than or equal to spell cost and we also need to remove the number of potions as well after we start casting so we can say if we cast a spell then inventory set potions to the potion count so let's pull that out local potion count equals inventory get potions there we go then we can set the potions to potion count minus self dot spell cost Uh, let's give that a go. So if I grab three of the potions, can now cast the spell, but I can't cast it anymore because I need another three. So let's uh, get rid of these, move to the next room, grab another potion and see if it works. Great, it does. Okay, so that's made our spell a little less spammable. So, a bit more fine tuning or just a bit more sort of general improvements. I have another sound, um, which I just call nope sound. Audio new source. Assets sounds um, nope dot wave. This is also static. And if uh, the player tries to cast the spell with no potions, then we'll just go ahead and uh, play the nope sound so they get some feedback. Okay, there we go. So now it plays a sound if I try and cast a spell, which I can't cast. Then if I and cast it, it will go ahead and cast the spell. So finally what we'll do is we'll use the status code uh, we introduced a little while ago now and we'll make a new status um, to stun any of the creatures or any of the enemies which are hit by our spell. So if we go into Let's uh, close inventory for now, and let's take a look at, where do we put it, logic, statuses, um, so knockback is a good example. So we have um, some code here that just creates a status, and a status is just a piece of code which changes the state of an entity, waits a while, and then changes that state again. So we'll create a new one in statuses for stun. So new file, and we'll call this stun.lua. Say local stun, stun.create, and return stun. And we can say our instance here is actually equal to uh, a new status object, so we'll require our status class uh, source logic status and this is equal to a new status and the status takes a duration so we'll pass in the duration we also need a target 
also the uh, target which we want to stun. So we can say status.ticks duration just to turn our duration from seconds into ticks. Um, then let's just check the order that the rest of the arguments go in. So status takes a duration, then a function to call when the duration expires, a function to call immediately, and a function to call every tick if we want to. So we can do our on, let's just uh, write this down so I remember, so it's on done and on apply and then finally nil because we don't care about on ticks for now. So what we'll do is on apply we'll have a function that says target dot interrupt movement uh, equals false or equals true for on apply um, on done, we'll have a tar we'll have a function that says target dot interrupt movement equals false, and we'll just make sure there are commas after both of those, and we just need to return our stun function. Now the other thing we need to do is just check that interrupt movement is wired up for our slimes because I think we currently only use it. In uh, for our player. So if we look at our player's movement code very quickly, which will be in logic AI movement, um, keyboard movement, we can see that we check to see if interrupt movement is set on the entity, and if it is, we don't uh, bother computing the movement, so the player just stays where they are. What I'm actually going to do is um, improve that a tiny bit by going into our entity class and inside of update we can just say if there's a movement method and not uh, self.interrupt movement so if movement is not interrupted then we want to go ahead and call our movement function otherwise we don't want to. And that will work for all entities, not just um, entities using the keyboard movement method. So now we've got that change in there, let's go back to our storm class and let's grab that should be local, let's uh, grab our stun effect or our stun status is require source logic statuses stun and then we can say mob add status stun dot create it will uh, we'll give it a duration of 10 and the target will be mob okay let's see if everything worked oops clearly not stun line 8 there we go, hopefully just as hypo there we go, I don't know if that was too short for people to see so I'm going to go back in to storm and change our, um, let's change this, give it a duration of 100 so it should be nice and obvious. Grab some potions and cast a spell. And hopefully people saw there that our um, slimes now get frozen for quite a while. I'll dial it back down, so 100 is probably a bit too long. And we'll finish this episode here. We need to add some uh, nice graphical effects as well so that the spell really uh, kind of looks impressive at the moment. Um, we get the sound and we see the, uh, the mobs flashing but we don't have anything to really make it look like a storm is happening. So we'll do that in the next episode. But thank you very much for watching and thank you for sticking with the series while there's been a short break. And I shall see you next time. Bye for now.